The election results are in, but who's going to form the next government? That's the question here at the Foreign Correspondents Club of Thailand. Anuson Uno, Dean of Tamasat University's Faculty of Sociology and Anthropology, said the controversial party list seat formula was part of the Election Commission's coping strategy to limit the success of Future Forward. This formula is, you know, in contradictory to, you know, the Constitution and also the election laws. Uh, Former advisor to the Constitution Drafting Committee, J. Tonawani thought that, contrary to expectations, not all the new senators will back pro-military parties. So the 250 senators, you might have about 50 up to 100, of whom you cannot say is on which side. But another about 150 all the way up to 200, perhaps you can totally say that they are on the Palang Pacharat, NCPO, or General Prayut side. This election was one of the most manipulated before the election and after the election in Thai history. Nat Suan, university lecturer Paul Chambers, foresaw a Palang Pacharat-led government unable to pass laws, perhaps followed by an appointed government, another election, or possibly another coup. If the Anakot Mai, Future Forward Party, was somehow dissolved, yeah, there could be rioting in the streets. Uh, and we could then eventually come back to that quote from General Apirat Kong Songpong, Army Commander, who said, if there's rioting, last November, he said, if there's rioting, in the, and, uh, I might have to repress that rioting. There might even be a coup, he said. And BBC Southeast Asia correspondent Jonathan Head said the election has done nothing to heal Thailand's political divide or end the role of the military in politics. This is clearly something Thailand has to think about. Uh, Future Forward has raised the issue very seriously about cutting the military budget, uh, ending conscription and starting to curb uh, the military's ability to intervene in politics. And that's probably very likely the reason that Future Forward is being so heavily targeted now with uh, a range of what anybody can see are pretty spurious uh, legal charges. You, you, it, the, problem for the, the problem with the military is they've got guns and they, have, they don't obey laws. I mean, when they, when they take over the government, as they themselves admitted, I remember they told us this, that Lord Chiku was an act of treason. It's why they rip up the constitution simultaneously as they seize power, because under that constitution they've committed treason. And they do this time and time again. And you have to ask, is this healthy where large parts of society who don't want change or don't like the way things are going think in the back of their minds, oh, well, we can always rely on the military to step in. Uh, and that possibly is a, an issue that Thais now need to think about once they actually end up with a government in office. Instead of returning power to the people, the March 24th election has perpetuated the cycle of division and the future of Thai politics is murkier than ever. Dave Kendall, Bangkok Post, Bangkok.